what you were, were facing in your country with those who uh, take news in uh, using Islamophobia as a weapon against anyone they reject. And unfortunately, ironically, uh, this was used against me too. Mm -hmm. They accused me, despite being a Muslim, of being Islamophobic. I come from Egypt, the country where the most dangerous political Islamist organization started, the Muslim Brotherhood. And I call it the most dangerous, although all the time they claim that they are more moderate than the Salafists or Sunni groups, Sunni extremist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS and so, but they are the most dangerous because they, their thought, their ideology was the basis upon which all these extremist groups was built. So, uh, for example, you would be surprised to know that, or perhaps you know, that people like Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and Osama bin Laden started their life in their youth as members of the Muslim Brotherhood, adopting this same ideology that for years and years, for almost a century, its main goal was to establish or re-establish an Islamic caliphate under which all the people will be governed by uh, Islamic Sharia. And by all the people, I'm not only speaking about the Arabs, not only speaking about the Muslims, but they only had very big ambitions about changing Western societies like the United States. One of their famous documents about their future plans in the United States and in the West in general is sabotaging America from within, sabotaging the United States from within so they can establish, uh, end this concept of nation state and democratization and establish their own state. As someone who always believed in democracy and fought for democracy in my country, I participated in the Arab Spring and uh, I'm proud to say that I was one of the leaders of the Arab Spring Revolution in Egypt that brought down uh, the dictatorship of Mubarak, I knew, I saw the threat of the Muslim Brotherhood very early. Not only from the moment they hijacked our revolution in 2011 and claimed that it is their revolution and they are the ones who are leading it because uh, sadly at that time we were so naive, we were so young and naive and they were the only organized group on the ground that can really make um, a political challenge to the military power in Egypt. So they hijacked our revolution very easily, but even before that, I saw their threat coming because of the influence they had at Egyptian universities using the same uh, rhetoric, the same narrative that is now used in American universities and Canadian universities and the universities in the West, which is the so-called Palestinian cause. It's very similar scenes to what we are seeing here now, people protesting in the name. They claim that they are sympathetic with the Palestinians, they are sympathetic with the innocent civilians, with the humanitarian situation, which I'm sure all of us agree with that. Like all of us don't want to see people suffering from war. But they use that as a cover to their anti-Semitic agenda that is mainly focusing on eliminating Israel and em eliminating every voice that supports the existence of Israel in the Middle East or the integration of Israel in the Middle East as actually an, a historical part of the Middle East. So using this narrative, they did not only dominate the Egyptian universities at that time, I'm, I'm speaking specifically in the period after uh, second Intifada, they call it in early 2000s. It was the time when I was an undergraduate student. And actually, I was one of those who were fo fooled by their rhetoric, by their narrative. Um, day and night, we're watching footage on Al Jazeera TV. We feel very bad. They all the time in, in our universities like promote things like we have to sympathize with our Muslim, not, you know, like our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine. Again, it's the bad Jewish people who are killing them as if like, you know, the Jewish people just, or Israel just decide to wake up one day and kill. It was even said in our media actually that Israel is purposefully killing the Palestinians because their number is multiplying and thus they want to make sure that their number will not outnumber the number of the Jewish people in Israel. So I was one of the students, like so many students here in American universities that were, was fooled by this narrative until later on I learned the truth. 